Hi everyone. Today I want to share share with you a, a an interesting problem uh, that a friend of mine mentioned to me the other day, and um, I think the solution is interesting. A little hard to come up with. Involves a bunch of type families, but it's sort of this classic case of where the type system is just getting in the way. And why can't Haskell figure this out for me? Well, it turns out it can. You just need to use some fancy tools. Um, oh, one quick plug: Tweeg is now hiring. Uh, this is an exciting opportunity. You can find out more information from the Tweeg website. Um, um, but uh, we are hiring in Haskell positions. There'll be links in the in the description. Um, anyway, back to back to business here. Okay, so uh, so what's the case? The, the 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 example is is what if we have deeply nested records? So I'm going to look at a case of some deeply nested records here. So an A might store maybe B, and then maybe B stores a maybe C. And C stores, oh, we'll have C store a list of D. And D stores just a plain old E. And then E, well, we'll say E, this is probably good enough, stores maybe it. All right. So we have some complicated record structure here. And uh, the idea is that, that each time when we look inside, we're either going to find a maybe or a list, or maybe just the actual thing, right? Um, and imagine lots and lots of fields and lots and lots of deep structure like this. Um, and so what we'd like to do is we'd like to be able, given something of type A, we'd like to just be able to go in and get an int as long as all of the pieces work out, right? So when I say get an int, well, of course, if this field, as we sort of traverse down, is empty, then we're not going to get the int. We're going to return nothing. Um, but as long as all of these things exist, and as, as long as this list has at least one element, and we'll retrieve from the first element of the list, uh, we want to go down and get that int. So that's our goal. Our goal is to have some function that goes from A to maybe int, um, at somehow traversing through all of these. Well, how can we, how can we achieve that goal? Um, so the idea here is I'm going to write a combinator called get. And get is going to start with maybe record. Um, let's just use R so I don't get funny syntax highlighting. So it's going to be, we're going to get maybe the record. And then we're going to have the, the accessor. So it's going to be R to the field. Um, and then that should give us maybe field, right? Because it might not succeed. So we can imagine some get like this. And let's not even bother to define that just yet, but we will give it a fixity. This is actually the default fix. I could have left that out. Um, and then my goal, I could imagine writing this something like this, just a get A field, get B field, get C field, get D field, get E field. Um, and, and let's see what happens when I try to run that, try to compile that. Ah. Well, I get all of these errors, and that's because the types aren't really lining up, right? When I say get a field, well, that's going to return not a B, but it's going to return a maybe B. Um, so what I really need to do here is sort of look one, one layer under, and each time down, I'm going to get another one of these type errors. So, so that's no good. So I could redefine my get function to look like this. I could write maybe here. And then now if I try to compile, I'm not going to get that first error, but I'm still going to get errors down here with D and, and E, right? Because here my types don't involve maybe. So maybe I just want this something. I don't know what the something is going to be, and then I can compile. But I still now have a problem with this E because the E doesn't have a something. Um, and if E did have a something, we could imagine some class abstracting over something and working our way out this way. But, but we, don't, we don't really have that. So, so here's, here's this case. This, this, we we want to be able to get this to work. So how can I write a get function that looks like this so that I can use it in this way and it all works out? And that's, and that's the task before us. So it's tempting to write a class that does this. So class, uh, we'll call it field type. Um, and then maybe get becomes a method of this class. So get can get maybe r to r to field to uh, maybe something. So at first blush, we could imagine maybe an associated type would work. 
Um, so we could get sort of we could write a, an associated type payload here. So we're going to get the payload of the field, um, and then we could look at something like this. This looks perhaps promising. Um, let's see what happens if I try to compile this. Oh well, we don't have type families on, so let's fix that. That's easy to fix. And let me adjust windows so that we can see what I'm doing better. Um, and I try to compile this, and what, what are we going to get? Well, can't match payload of maybe b with b. Oh, well, that's easy enough. We just need some instances, don't we? So I can have an instance field type of maybe b, where um, type payload maybe b equals b, and get, you can spend some time figuring out why that's why on your own, but that will work. Um, uh, and so, so that works for the maybe, uh, but it doesn't work so well for these last bits down here. It doesn't work so well for list. The big problem really, though, is going to be what do we do in this default case? Right? I want to have an instance field type something else. And then now I'm in trouble. I'd like to be able to write something like this. And let's not worry about that for right now. But, but when I do this, now we're going to be in trouble uh, because, oh, we're going to have oh distinct type variables. We need flexible instances. Oh, yes, we do. OK, so flexible instances, but that's not really the interesting problem. Conflicting family instance declarations. So the problem here is that I've said that payload of maybe b is b, but payload of something else is something else. Well, there's no way that GHC knows that these two cases are distinct. And this is a problem. So the solution to this, when we have a type family where we sort of can't tell the different cases apart, or even classes where we can't tell the different cases apart, is to use what's called a closed type family. And a closed type family works just like a function in that we have ordered pattern matching top to bottom. Uh, so the idea here is that we want to take our field type um, and, and case on it. So we're going to write type family. I'm going to call it sort. Not that it's sorting, but it, it figures out the sort of a thing. Um, I, the truth is I don't have a very good name for this idea. Um, so we're going to have type family sort field type where sort of maybe a is going to be a and um, just maybe. Let me write this out and then we'll come back and I'll explain what's going on here. Um, uh, using brackets is really confusing, so I'm just going to use this, this type synonym. So I can say list a a just list and then sort of something else is going to be other nothing. Okay, let's comment out all of this stuff that's giving us errors and just make sure that what we've written so far makes sense. Um, oh, perhaps I meant data kinds. Oh, I definitely need data kinds for this. Oh, and that's all I need. Amazing. Um, okay, so what am I doing here? I'm writing a type family that inspects to see what this field type is, and depending on what it is, I'm returning different values. So what I'm returning here is a promoted pair, right? This is normally when I'm writing in a type and I use parentheses and commas, I'm talking about uh, the type of pairs. Here I'm not talking about the type of pairs. I'm talking about a pair that just happens to be at compile time. And so this tick is saying use the data constructor of parentheses and commas, not the type constructor made up of parentheses and commas. Um, that's important. If I leave, if I leave this out, um, I get very strange type errors because it's expecting both of these things to be types, but they're not types; they're other things. So we definitely need the tick marks in there. Um, so then, what am I doing? Well, I'm returning the sort of the payload. In this case, in these first two cases, a, and in this last case, other, as well as some information about how it's wrapped up. So in this case, it's wrapped up in a maybe. In this case, it's wrapped up in a list. In this case, it's wrapped up in nothing at all. Um, and so we can actually give a type signature to sort. So what is sort? Well, sort takes in a type, and then it returns a pair of a type, as well as, well, a maybe of something that wraps a type. So that's going to be the kind of sort. Oh, and now we're going to need more extensions. So we need standalone kind signatures. Um, and we need to import data.kind. OK, now we're all good again. So once we have this sort type family, now I can define this field type 
Um, but actually, I need to define this field type. And this, I'm, I'm going to add a second parameter, which I'll call the wrapper. And we're going to have a constraint here that says that for every instance of this class, second of the sort of the field equals the wrapper. And what this means is that now I can write instances with different wrappers, and so I can distinguish that, that unique uh, sort of fall-through case from the others. Okay, so let's see. Now I'm going to have other problems. Oh, I don't have second. Of course I don't have second. So let's define. We'll need first in a moment, two. Um, so we can write this, and then we can write second. Okay, so that it liked. Oh, now it's complaining about something else. Expected. Oh, oh, what have I done wrong? Excuse me for that. That took me a sec to figure out what was going on. So the problem is, is that I don't have polykinds on. And so if I add polykinds, then GHC accepts the possibility that wrapper is not of kind star and, and can um, and can do a better job. Oh, and then now I need multi-param type classes. Okay, excellent. Um, okay, so that was sort of an obscure error that was a little hard to figure out, but we just needed polykinds. Um, so now, now here, so this makes some sense. Oh, and this payload, we're not going to use payload anymore because that's just returned in sort. So really, this is not going to return payload anymore, but first of sort of field. And now we can start defining useful instances. So I can have field type for maybe, and here it's going to be maybe, and then this is going to be just maybe has to be its, its sort. Um, we've gotten rid of payload. And then this amazingly still type checks because we can evaluate that sort of maybe b uh, or first of sort of maybe b is just b and then the types all work out nicely. That's good. Um, I can write a new instance for lists. And I could do this with the bracket notation, but I don't want to because that's confusing. Um, and so what is this going to be? So this, if I have a thing, just x and then f, and then, oh, I'll have to run f on x. And then if that works, then I can return just y, I think. And then otherwise, I'm going to return nothing because my list was empty. And then here, if I start with nothing, then surely I end with nothing. Hey, that worked. Um, and then this last sort of thing that looks like it should be very overlapping, I have something else. And then here, this is the key bit, is now I have nothing. So now it doesn't overlap. I can distinguish which instance I want by looking here. Um, and so payload is gone. And then get, well, this is going to be a maybe and then a function. But of course, we can just use fmap. Uh, we're gonna, you can explore on your own time why fmap is the right thing there. Um, oh, but here's something interesting. We don't know that second of sort something else is nothing, even though that's required by the class. So it turns out that here, again, GHC isn't going to be sure that I only got to this case because I avoided these other cases. So I need to assert that as an instance constraint. Uh, but that's easy to do. I'm just going to say sort something else really is something else and nothing. And then hooray. And we can do that. Now, does my goal work? Yes, it does. And that's because what GHC can do is it can look at the type of A field and B field and C field and D field and E field and then figure out which one of these instances to select each time. And then we get beautiful, beautiful type inference. So I hope that this was helpful to you. Um, uh, thanks for watching. Bye.